BBOR Black Box Online Radio coming to you from West Virginia. Black Box Ned 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. And welcome to BBOR, the home of True Crime Talk Radio and your premier destination for unsolved mysteries, criminal psychology, and exploring the dark side of cyberspace. My name is Ned DeHaan, and I am your host as well as the creator of Astro Psych 400 here on YouTube, and regular contributor to the Zodiac Killer channel. And a great way to support these shows is just by listening to some more content. But you can also go over to Amazon.com and have a look at the book Killer on a White Horse, written by me, Ned Dahan. It is a novel, murder mystery, inspired by the Zodiac Manson connection, but it is indeed fictional. However, who doesn't love a good mystery? And there is always the Teespring page. Feel free to check out some of the merchandise. And remember, being weird is not a crime. Let the show begin. All right, hello everybody. Today is Wednesday. Feel free to come on in and chill with the birds. And on Wednesdays this year, I've been doing a regular segment about Jack the Ripper, perhaps the world's most famous unsolved serial killer mystery. And in addition to that, I've also launched a new series of shorter episodes called Ned's Journal, which are coming out periodically on this channel. And a great way to support all of these efforts is just by hitting the like button, subscribing, and sharing with your friends and family on social media if they're curious about true crime cases. But with Ned's Journal, I'm going to be covering any subject under the sun or in the darkness. And you can also go over to buymeacoffee.com, buymeacoffee.com slash blackboxned88. There's a link to that in the description box. This website allows you to make a donation or contribution to help support the show. And anybody who makes a donation will get a shout out on Zodiac Monday. Yesterday on the channel, I did a journal episode about James Maybrick. He is a suspect in the Jack the Ripper mystery, but he is also one of the few suspects in that case who went on to be either murdered himself or dying under very suspicious circumstances. In fact, James Maybrick's own wife was convicted for the murder, but there's a very high possibility that his death was accidental as a result of unintentional poisoning, and I discussed that in an episode here on this channel called The Murder of James Maybrick. But in this episode, I really wanted to focus on the reasons why people think that James Maybrick could have been Jack the Ripper. And firstly, James Maybrick was a cotton merchant. He spent time in both England and in America, and at one point he was even spending up to six months in America. He was from Liverpool, but he frequently went to London. And James Maybrick becomes a suspect because in 1992, a man named Michael Barrett came forward and said that he was in the possession of a journal or diary. The word diary is used very frequently to describe it. And this diary was said to have had a confession from James Maybrick, where he admitted to being Jack the Ripper. He gave all the details and reasons why he was Jack the Ripper, why he committed the crimes, why he did them in the manner in which they were done, as well as the um, emotions and the motives and everything was shared in this diary. He said that he received it from a man named Tony Devereaux, who was a drinking buddy of his, and that story as to how Tony Devereaux came into the possession of James Maybrick's diary doesn't seem to be completely clear even to this day, but I think the overall mostly well-accepted narrative is that it was discovered by either construction workers or electricians while they were renovating the home, which James Maybrick used to inhabit called Battle Creek, and they found it underneath floorboards, and that it got into the possession of Tony Devereaux, who then gave it to Michael Barrett and just told him to do something with it. But this is in 1992, more than a 100 years after the Whitechapel murders, or at the very least the crimes that were attributed to Jack the Ripper. It's possible the Whitechapel murders went up to 1891, but I'll, I'll digress from that. And... Again, James Maybrick is a cotton merchant. He was married to an American woman named Florence, and she took on his name, Florence Maybrick. And the theory as to how James Maybrick became Jack the Ripper was that 
he was much older than his wife. Well, he was 42 when he met Florence, and she was 18, and that ultimately she had an affair, and he was rather devastated because of that. So he developed the Jack the Ripper persona as a way to restore a shattered ego, and instantly I thought of this. Other people thought of this. This is widely discussed in the documentary The Diary of Jack the Ripper, where they're saying, all right, if he wants to get revenge on his wife for having an affair, why go after um, women who were not connected to the situation at all, like Polly Nichols and Annie Chapman and Liz Stride and Kate Eddowes and Mary Kelly? And the answer to that is very simple. I actually heard this on an episode of, um, oh, what, what was it called? Um, what the French Toast is the name of the uh, channel here on YouTube. I'll just refer to it as the French Toast channel. And they said, because... He would have targeted different women, not his own wife, because he wanted to act out the fantasy of murdering his wife over and over again. And this is a man who is in somewhat poor health but still has the ability to commit the crimes to commit the Ripper murders, not only killing the women but also mutilating them. And there are explanations that have been provided in the diary as to why the crimes were occurring on such dates. There's a very interesting thing if you look at the crimes of Jack the Ripper, because Jack the Ripper was a spree killer, and the first crime took place on August 31st of 1888. The final crime was on uh, November 9th of 1888. But the Ripper operated in August, in September, and in November of 1888. Jack the Ripper did not commit a crime, to the best of our knowledge, in the month of October 1888. Now, why would that be? In the diary, it is stated that is because James Maybrick was experiencing poor health, he was ill, and he was unable to do that and wasn't able to regain his composure and get back to normal until November. And he had health ailments throughout his life, and he also had um, developed an addiction to arsenic, which was used as a medicine at the time, and he was taking doses of that, as well as partnered with other meta medicinal remedies that could have been poisonous. So, that actually may have led to his death, and I talked about that a lot in the episode The Murder of James Maybrick, so I want to look at some of the reasons why people think that James Maybrick could have been Jack the Ripper. And there's a very big conflicting piece of information because when I was watching that documentary, The Diary of Jack the Ripper, they said that James Maybrick was somewhat of a hypochondriac. He did have real medical conditions, but he was also someone who would frequently visit both doctors and the chemist, which as I understand in my American English would be the pharmacist, and that these appointments were preserved in the medical records even into the 1990s, and that on every date of Ripper activity, James Maybrick was in London, and again, you know, he's from Liverpool, but on every date of the Ripper's activities in the fall of 1888 and the summer of 1888, they could place him in London. Now, there is a big uh, challenge to that that is put forward in uh, the book The Maybrick Murder, as well as discussed on the Jack the Ripper Tour YouTube channel, where it was stated that that is not true, and um, the discussion that they were having on that channel simply stated that they could not verify that James Maybrick was actually in London on those specific dates. So I am someone who doesn't immediately have access to the chemist records from 1888 right in front of me. I am in somewhat of a conflict right now. I can tell you which side I'm leaning toward. I'm rather skeptical that they actually had verified all of the records and doctor's appointments and trips to the pharmacy for James Maybrick, and they were actually able to verify with 100% certainty that he was in London. But again, that is just my suspicion, and, and I do that here on this channel. I share things, and the real motive of this channel is just to evaluate pieces of information and to find out does it make sense? I mean, have you ever had those experiences where you're either reading something or watching a YouTube video, and you get that question in your mind, wait a second, is that really true? And that's what I talk about here on Black Box All Night Radio. But in addition to James Maybrick um, being able to be placed in London and his wife having the affair 
Is it possible that his name actually contains the meaning of Jack the Ripper? And Jack, first two letters are J-A, as in James. And then the final two letters of Maybrick are C-K. The final two letters of Jack are C-K. James Maybrick, Jack the Ripper. It's almost as if the um, beginning and the ending of his name is used as a signature to then become Jack the Ripper. Now, when I was watching the documentary, The Diary of Jack the Ripper, which was talking all about Michael Barrett and how he came into the possession of this diary, they said something that was very bold, and that is that James Maybrick could not be a suspect if it weren't for the discovery of this diary. He was involved with a real true crime case, his own murder, and his wife went on trial for it, very widely publicized, the iceberg poisoning case it was called, but that James Maybrick would not have been a suspect if it weren't for the diary, or that he could not be taken seriously as a Jack the Ripper suspect if it weren't for the discovery of this diary. And my simple response to that is, why? Why would they say that? Even if, even if someone did indeed forge the diary, could someone have not put the clues together and figured it out on their own that James Maybrick was Jack the Ripper? And yes, they forged the diary, which was an immoral and unethical thing to do, but how does that immediately rule him out as a Jack the Ripper suspect? That was just my first question, and I genuinely don't have an answer for that. I think things that would rule somebody out as a suspect would be being able to, say, place him in America, in Norfolk, Virginia, where he had an office on the dates of river activity. That's what would rule somebody out, because let's not kid ourselves. People do this, especially in the internet age. They will falsify statements. They will Photoshop images. They will say things that are not true. They do this all the time, but that has no actual effect on the historical events that took place. So no matter what anyone thinks about Michael Barrett or the discovery of this Jack the Ripper diary, then... I mean, that's just where I'm at. And if you want to dispute that with me in the comment section, you can put your idea down below. Could somebody like James Maybrick still be a Jack the Ripper suspect, even if this diary was a forgery? And on the Jack the Ripper Tour YouTube channel, they talked about the word diary. Everyone's referring to this thing as a diary, but um, even one of the presenters there said that it should be called a journal. And I can comprehend that because it sounds like it's more of a confession rather than a diary. I mean, when I think of diary, I think somebody entering every day be like, August 30th, 1888, this is what happened, this is what I did today, this is what I ate for breakfast. And they're writing down their personal um, daily routine, as well as their daily feelings. This is what I'm thinking about, August 31st, this is the murder that took place, and here are the details. But it appears that the diary um, involved with the murder, uh, with the murders attributed to Jack the Ripper, are providing an enormous amount of details that either seem to be completely correct or could just be coincidental that the that the um, forger got it right. But one of the most striking pieces of information I genuinely think genuinely think that this is a fascinating find is that when the body of Mary Kelly, Jack the Ripper's final victim, was photographed. In the back, there was a circle with two letters in it, and the letters were F and M, and the initials of James Maybrick's wife were Florence Maybrick, F, M, and this whole thing about how it's a revenge plot, and he's just acting out the fantasy of killing his wife over and over again. Maybe he had a larger plan to have kill his wife at the end, but then his health deteriorated even more. And ultimately, James Maybrick would pass away in 1889 from poisoning of some type. I mean, it could have been arsenic poisoning. It could have been strychnine poisoning. It could have been something involving taking medications that were too powerful for him. And it doesn't necessarily mean that he was poisoned by his wife, but um, oh, but she went on to serve uh, 15 years in prison for it. She was sentenced to life in prison, but she served 15 years, and then there was um, some type of dispute as to the ruling, and almost like that she didn't get a fair trial, so to speak. It wasn't exactly an appeal, but she... Um, was let out of prison in 1904, and she went on to live until 1941, then to the middle of World War I. So, 
those are the pieces of evidence in favor of James Maybrick being Jack the Ripper. I think that the counterclaims are so much more valuable to discuss. Number one, there's the discovery of this um, diary or confession where not only is it James Maybrick allegedly writing out, but he does indeed sign it Jack the Ripper. But the confession ultimately results in an admission from Michael Barrett in 1995 that the diary was indeed a forgery, that he worked on it with his wife, that the two of them forged the diary together. And the reason for this was Michael Barrett was unemployed at the time, and he wanted to be a writer, and he was an aspiring author. However, he had been researching the story of the iceberg poisoning, the story of the murder of James Maybrick, and he had that narrative rather down in a solid way. But So what they did was they added an additional fictional element by incorporating him into the midst of the Jack the Ripper story, trying to make a true crime research expedition more exciting for the general public, even if it meant lying. And then, okay, Michael Barrett confessed to that, then he retracted his confession, then confessed again, then retracted it again, and his wife ultimately ended up divorcing him. And again, this was shared on the French Toast channel, and they talked about how his wife provided her own narrative of the story, that her father was the person who had discovered James Maybrick's diary, and she provided it to the man named Tony Devereaux, the drinking buddy of her husband, and then told him, hey, he wants to be a writer. This will help jumpstart his writing career. Give him this diary and just tell him to do something with it. So that she's saying that it was authentic. She just told uh, someone to give it to her husband under um, some type of um, discreet means just to get him thinking in a particular way. And I... Um, I ultimately have to to say that I'm leaning toward this being a hoax or a forgery, that these people made it up. And also, there is the possibility that the handwriting just simply does not match. Even in the Jack the Ripper, um, the Diary of Jack the Ripper documentary that is available here on YouTube for free, there are two different versions of it. One of them is... Um, the entire version. I think it's on the channel Otto von Bismarck. It has like the one hour and 20 minute full version of the Diary of Jack the Ripper. And what that one states is that the handwriting doesn't match that of Jack the Ripper, and it also doesn't match that of James Maybrick. And instantly when I was watching this, I was thinking, well, now wait a second, isn't that just the end of everything? Hook, line, and sinker? I mean, doesn't that just mean that this whole thing was a forgery? Now, it also doesn't sound like that hypothetical that I put forward we would even apply to Michael Barrett because the hypothetical about, okay, well, he thought James Maybrick was Jack the Ripper, so he forged the diary because he wanted to get people's attention. The whole concept of making a lot of noise to draw a crowd and then telling people the truth, I mean, that doesn't appear to be the likely scenario. It's a scenario, but it doesn't appear to be the likely scenario. I mean, that's also a big strike against any type of authenticity. And if you do watch the documentary, The Diary of Jack the Ripper, it's hard to watch for the following reason. There are all of these experts on there that are just saying, well, maybe it's authentic and maybe it's not. And it's quite possible that it was fabricated in the 1930s or the 1980s. And it's also quite possible that it was created in the 1880s. And it's just maybe this and maybe that. And it's just going back and forth. And I'm like, all right, well, yes, of course it's possible that it could have been fabricated in the 1900s. Or it could have been possible that it was created in the 1800s. You guys are the experts. Holy crap, just get to the point and tell us like, make a determination. I mean, if you're experts, I mean, I'm not an expert on Jack the Ripper at all, and I will run my mouth on the internet all day long about what I think happened. And to give just the smallest ounce of fairness to them, it's also in the category of sometimes people genuinely don't know, and they genuinely have pieces of evidence for and pieces of evidence against. And in the alleged confession from... Michael Barrett, that the one that he retracted, I guess the, this one came in 1995, he said that he had researched the murder of James Maybrick and he was working on a book about that, so he felt confident that he was able to create this forgery in a way that wouldn't be, um, wouldn't be seen by anyone, that wouldn't be um, figured out by anyone, because 
it was done in a way in which he had read up a lot on the life of James Maverick, so he was able to say things that would have been historically accurate. And there were a lot of things in the Diary of Jack the Ripper documentary as well when they're talking about, oh, well, a letter is mentioned in the journal. Now, it could be referring to the Dear Boss letter, or it could be referring to Jack the Ripper's From Hell letter, and they're not really quite specifying. Again, it's just, could have been this, could have been that. And I know they're doing a TV show, but I'm somebody who simply wants the truth. I'm somebody who's just like, well, I mean, what do you think happened? I mean, like, is there a reason why this thing is inaccurate? Oh, no. So it's just a giant question mark. All right, you have a one hour and 20 minute documentary just saying, well, maybe a bunch of things happened and we don't really know what they are. And that will be the ultimate conclusion of that. But, um... I will try to make a more direct stance, and even though, even though I've I've said a lot of counter arguments, I would make the ultimate determination that most likely the diary was a fake or in a forgery because of number one the handwriting. I do put a certain amount of weight in the confessions, but forget those if the handwriting isn't matching. Plus the whole story, and this was shared. Um, this was shared on Jack the Ripper tour. The story of how James Maybrick is in terrible health, yet he somehow is able to pull up the floorboards in his house by pulling out the uh, brass nails, I guess they were, and then putting the diary under the floorboards, then hammering down new nails in place to secure the floorboard back so nobody would have noticed. I mean... I guess maybe he could have had somebody do that for him, but then that's just an inserting an imaginary person into the story to make it work. Assumption, assumption, assumption. And I talk about this with true crime cases all the time, about how people are proposing a suspect. But if the only way that they can get their suspect to work in the theory is to add in fictitious and imaginary individuals who are pulling the strings behind the scene. Well, he could have had a co-conspirator that, 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 that did this. Oh, he could have had an accomplice that did this for him. It's just relying on these types of mental gaps that are being filled in by by some writer, and I'm not a fan of those. So as you can see from this, I am leaning toward James Maybrick not being Jack the Ripper, but, I mean, at face value, like, in, if you were to just read up on James Maybrick for five minutes on the internet, you probably would come away thinking that he was Jack the Ripper. But six minutes or seven minutes into it, you're like, no, wait a second, this seems like everything's provided so easily that this most likely was a story that was untrue, but oddly enough, I also do not believe that James Maybrook was murdered by his wife Florence, as previously stated, and most likely he died from accidental poisoning, says me anyway, but I just wanted to be very clear about stating some of the reasons why I had come to these conclusions. But is there a particular Jack the Ripper suspect that you're curious about? Is there a Ripper suspect that you would like to hear about for the Wednesday show? or even anything true crime related for some of the journal episodes, or anything outside of the true crime world. As I said, any subject is fair game. And please put your ideas in the comment section down below. And for this particular episode, do you agree or disagree with me with any of the comments that I've made about James Maybrick as a Jack the Ripper suspect? One final note that I'll leave you with is, the idea of leaving Jack as a signature for James Maybrick the first two letters of James, the last two letters of Maybrick, J-A-C-K. There is just insufficient evidence to make a determination either way. Number one, Jack is a very common name. Lots of names could work out in a scenario like that. I mean, I mean, how many people in the country would have already been named Jack or already been named James and then it's like, I mean, James is a very common English name, and just you would need anybody with the last names that has CK in it. James Black, and I'm so sorry, but the only other name I could think of was James Cock, and uh, no, that was bad. But, I mean, that's the whole point, though. It's just lots of English words end in the letter C and K, so insufficient evidence to make a determination on that. But in all seriousness, one point where I would agree with the um, Diary of Jack the Ripper documentary is that if it were indeed a forgery, if that diary were indeed a forgery, 
it wouldn't have been a crude forgery. It would have been a rather skillful and well-done forgery because, I mean, it's just those pieces of information that are shared. They're, let's say, hypothetically, it is indeed a hoax. Well, there's something that is rather ingenious about that. You can't debunk any of it. Oh, yeah, well, J Jack is a... Um, uh, is a it means James Maybrick, and there's also a story about how uh, two women were murdered in Liverpool, but there's n there are no details provided around about the killings. So then it's just well maybe it's true, maybe it's not, maybe the theory works, maybe it doesn't, and it's filled with things like that. So if it were indeed a forgery, which I think it is, perhaps a rather well done forgery, but still. Um, immoral and unethical, and just abusing the system, obstructing justice, and very inappropriate. But that's my take on the subject. What do you think about James Maybrick as a Jack the Ripper suspect? What do you think about the diary that was discovered in 1992? Is there any particular observation and response that you have? You can put your ideas in the comments section down below. Anybody can write the show at blackboxonlineradio at AOL.com. You can also get me on Facebook. My personal Facebook is in the description box. And there is always blackboxnid88 over on Instagram. And... And absolutely, final note for you, James Maybrick is a Jack the Ripper suspect, but his brother Michael Maybrick also goes on to become a Ripper suspect. So please look out for an episode about Michael Maybrick in the future here on BBOR. And as previously stated, I did an episode on the murder of James Maybrick. This is going to be the second one, um, talking about him as a Jack the Ripper suspect. And please look out for the episode on Michael Maybrick as a Jack the Ripper suspect. Until next time.